the latest news in North Central Washington, go to ncwlife.com or find us on Facebook. Got a news tip? Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-2020. Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And it was a nice one out there today. Temperatures mainly in the middle to upper 70s around the area. We did see uh, some sunshine this morning, but lots of haze this afternoon. And I'll tell you where that's came from. All the way from wildfires in Siberia in a release by the National Weather Service this afternoon. A few CO emissions and some haze out there. And this is our weather picture for at least a couple more days. Large area of low pressure just sitting idly in the eastern Pacific right now. And that's pumping lots of warm air right into the Pacific Northwest. And we are continuing to warm up and we'll continue to do so tomorrow. And still a nice day on Friday. And then that low pressure kicks into gear, moves our way by the week. Weekend, and that will definitely change our weather pattern as we get into uh, Saturday, Friday night and into Saturday. Talk more about weather a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. A 48-year-old Quincy man was killed and a woman received serious injuries in a one-vehicle collision on Sunday night. And a rabid bat collected in Chelan County by animal control last week was in fact in Wenatchee. But first we begin tonight. The top brass from three Chelan County agencies met yesterday at the Confluence Technology Center for a tri-commission meeting and the future of Alcoa's Wenatchee Works idled smelter was on the agenda. Here's more on that story. Representatives were on hand from Chelan County, the Chelan County Port District, and the Chelan County PUD. Updates were presented on topics such as Pangborn Airport's long-term financial sustainability, the Cashmere Mill site, the proposed county PUD partnership for electrical service, cryptocurrency miners, and energy demand. Also featured was an update from Chelan PUD General Manager Steve Wright on the status of the Alcoa Wenatchee Works facility. Wright says the PUD and Alcoa are currently in talks to determine whether Alcoa will pay the PUD tens of millions of dollars or whether they will start back up. Well, we're about a couple of weeks away from a big deadline in the contract uh, when they need to uh, be operating or else they owe us the $62 million. At this point, they don't have a proposal on the table, for, uh, so we are... Uh, we have invoiced them. Uh, they know that they've got the invoice. They're, we're waiting to see what they will do with that. Uh, we're in conversations with them and we'll just see how it plays out. The Tri-Commission meeting also featured comments by Chelan County Mayors from Wenatchee, Chelan, Leavenworth and Eniat. Grant Olson, NCW Life News. Under the current power sales agreement with the PUD, the Wenatchee Works plant remains closed through, if the uh, plant remains closed through June, I should say, a $62 million deferred power contract charge would become due. 400 employees were laid off when Alcoa's production was curtailed in 2015. A 48-year-old Quincy man was killed and a woman received serious injuries in a one-vehicle collision Sunday night. Jose Lozano was the passenger in a car driven by 48-year-old Angela Anaya of Quincy. Deputies say Anaya was driving at high speed north of Road P Northwest when she failed to negotiate a curb. The Cadillac uh, tripped and rolled four times, e ejecting Lozano. Anaya was injured but able to walk to her Quincy home, and she was then driven by a friend to Quincy Valley Medical Center. Deputies spent over three hours searching for the collision. A deputy found Lozano dead at the scene around 3 a.m. Monday. Anaya was later transferred to a regional hospital where she was admitted in serious condition, condition rather, with a fractured skull. Alcohol and excessive speed contributed to that collision. Well, a week ago, a bat collected in Chelan County by animal control tested positive for rabies. Veronica Farias, public information officer for the Chelan Douglas Health District, says the bat was in fact found in Wenatchee, but it's not really that unusual. She says about two to three rabid bats are found in the Wenatchee Valley each year. She also tells us what to do in case a bat is found. Basically, the first thing is um, determine whether or not you did become in contact with the bat. If 
it's determined that you haven't, the first thing would be definitely don't touch the bat. And then the second thing would be call animal control so they could come and get the bat for you. Third thing would be to call the health district to determine whether or not it needs to be tested for rabies. And then we also have some information online on how to safely capture a bat in your home. So that would be a good place to go. Another good tip would be just to definitely um, make sure your pets, you know, your dogs and cats, ferrets are vaccinated. Um, in the past two to three years, we've had about two additional bats with rabies. To avoid possible exposure to rabies, do not touch live or dead bats and make sure your home's open windows have screens. Bats can also enter a home through the chimney, through vents, under loose shingles, and under eaves. Well, coming up next, a controlled agricultural burn is planned for Saturday at a pest-infected pear orchard on the western outskirts of Wenatchee. U.S. apple growers are targeted with tariffs as Mexico retaliates against Trump administration's foreign trade dispute. And Stemilk Growers is pitching a relatively new variety of cherry called the Skylar Ray. We'll tell you about it. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. I have a doctor who knows what they're talking about. It's just so much more hands-on and friendly than anywhere else I've ever been. It's really great to walk into somewhere where you feel welcomed and you feel accepted. We've just been grateful for the care and respect that we've been given there. And here when I come to visit my doctor, I'm not afraid to ask questions. It's not just about getting you in and out. I love my care, it's CBCH, it's awesome. Give it a try. <laughs> It turns out, some people are more likely to do well at Charter College and succeed in a new career. So, what's this charter type? Charter types are go-getters. Charter types follow through. Charter types love a challenge. If you're a hard worker looking for a fast path to a better career, you're just our type. Charter College. We work to get you to work. My story starts out with, I was addicted to meth for over 25 years, and I decided that's it, that I was no longer ever going to touch the drug ever again. Goodwill was the first place that I came to. The skills that are given to me, I will be able to succeed every day that I'm there. So that gave me the confidence that I can do this job. When you donate to Goodwill, you're helping people just like me. I love my work. Goodwill, there's more behind the store. Welcome back. And in another news, a controlled agricultural burn is planned for Saturday at a pest-infected orchard on the western outskirts of Wenatchee. Chelan County Fire Marshal Bob Plum says the fire is necessary to stop the spread of disease. This orchard was infected um, with fire blight. Uh, it's a highly contagious disease that transmits by insects getting into the sap that's oozing out of the dead wood and under certain conditions it can be airborne. It's a type of bacteria. Um, it's the only solution to stop it is to prune the dead wood out and then burn it. That's why it's named fire blight. And the, in an extreme case like this particular orchard, it's gotten all the way down into the trunk uh, of the tree and the so they have to pull the whole orchard and burn it. And we've got five acres of trees here, I believe, that if the plan works, they'll be using an excavator and pulling the trees on Thursday and Friday. And then with the weather window that we have coming this next weekend, uh, with the cooler temperatures and a possibility of rain, uh, we hope to be able to burn the piles. Plum says if the controlled burn goes forward as planned this weekend, it will be clearly visible to neighbors and passing motorists. Our concern is if this were in any other location, <laughs> it wouldn't be as big a deal, but we're right next to the major highway coming into Wenatchee, Highway 297. Um, and burning it on the weekend, there's going to be a lot of traffic. So we're trying to get the word out to folks so that they don't worry about seeing it and then there may be some smoke on the road. We're hoping that the weather conditions prevent that, but um, we're working to see what we need to do to 
to mitigate that danger as well. Plum says he's still working out details of the planned burn with the orchard owner and Chelan County Horticultural Pest Board. He says it will go forward only if weather conditions allow. Well, the U.S. apple growers are targeted with tariffs as Mexico retaliates against Trump administration's foreign trade dispute. Mexico announced Tuesday it will levy tariffs on imports of U.S. products. The order stipulates charges of 15 percent to 25 percent on U.S. farm goods, and they include pork, cheese, apples, and potatoes, also bourbon whiskey and cranberries. The move follows a U.S. decision to impose tariffs on imports of Mexican steel and aluminum purchases, which took effect on Friday. Washington exports apples valued at $200 million to $250 million to Mexico every year, representing 10 percent of its total market. Washington Apple Commission President Todd Fryhover talked to NCW Life News earlier this year about the prospects of a possible trade war and how it could upset the apple cart. The Washington apple industry, as maybe some of your viewers don't realize, is heavily dependent upon trade. A third of our product goes to over 60 countries around the world. Um, and this year we expect to ship over 40 million bushels to those 60 markets. So we're very heavily dependent upon trade and it really is the backbone to keeping growers successful financially to have those outlets in those foreign markets. Stamilt Growers is pitching a relatively new variety of cherry. They call the Schuyler Ray one of the sweetest cherries you'll ever eat and it, and it has Wenatchee Valley origins. On a stormy morning in 2005, the Toftness family was tending to its orchard when a rainbow appeared above their cherry trees. Troy and Kim viewed this rainbow as a symbol that their late daughter, Skylar Ray, would always be near. Not too far from where the rainbow had shown, Troy found a unique tree in a block of red cherries. He had decided to cut down the tree, but refrained because as he got closer, he noticed it was bearing cherries unlike anything he had seen before. A chance discovery like Troy's is a rare event in nature, and the significant new cherry it uncovered even rarer. Today, this gift from nature is best known by its trademark name, Skylar Ray. A Stamelt Growers exclusive, Skylar Ray cherries are now cultivated across our central Washington orchards. This golden cherry with the vibrant orange-red blush thrives in the warm Washington sunshine and is harvested every June and July. And thanks to Stamelt Growers for that excerpt from their Skylar Ray cherry promotional video. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, your sports update with Eric Granstrom and our feature story tonight. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Vominos Junk Haulers, big or small, they haul it all. Vominos Junk Haulers are experienced at hauling junk from your household items to yard and construction debris. That old hot tub and eyesore, Vominos, will make it Vominos. Recycling is a priority to Vominos Junk Haulers. They'll haul away your old appliances and electronics. And for the do-it-yourselfers, Vominos Junk Haulers also rents trucks and trailers. Call Vominos Junk Haulers and Moving Service today to schedule your free estimate. Cordell Schroeder, owner of East Wenatchee Mobile Storage. If you're thinking about making a move anytime soon, check out the East Wenatchee Mini Storage brand new mobile storage service. They drop it off at your location, you pack it, and they pick it up and store it in their protected warehouse at East Wenatchee for as long as you need. When you're ready, they'll drop it off at your new home or office. East Wenatchee Mini Storage is excited to offer this brand new service to our region. Call 509-884-8643 or find us on the web at ewministorage.com. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Wednesday to sports scoring five runs in the first inning. The Wenatchee Apple Sox couldn't hold on and fell in its home opener last night to the River City Athletics out of the Tri-Cities by a final of 8-7. to seven. 
Andrew Vargas' RBI double in the top of the ninth inning broke a 7-7 tie and gave the visitors the victory. Wenatchee was able to get two in the bottom of the ninth on the base paths, but the rally fell short when Mason Morenko's lined out to right field. Jordan Rathbone led uh, the ninth offensively for the Apple Sox, going through for five with an RBI and a run scored. Cashmere grad Tyler Chipman got the start on the mound for Wenatchee, going three and two-thirds. He allowed six runs on four hits and had trouble with the strike zone. Eight strike or eight walks on the night. Carver Pate was tagged with a loss, going two innings and allowing the one run off the bat of Vargas in the ninth. Wenatchee will be home again tonight with another non-league game as the Northwest Honkers come to town. First pitch at 7.05. Also in West Coast League play last night, Bellingham shut out Walla Walla 1-0. Port Angeles beat up on Ben 16-2, Victoria doubled up on Yakima Valley 6-3, and the Portland Pickles got a 4-3 road win at Cowlitz. The schedule tonight has Yakima Valley at Victoria, Walla Walla at Bellingham, Portland at Cowlitz, Corvallis at Kelowna, and Ben hosting Port Angeles. There you see the standings with Bellingham on top at 3-1 in the north. Wenatchee tied for second, a half game back with Port Angeles, a full game back is a Victoria and Yakima Valley, Kelowna on the bottom of the stack, but just still a game out. It's early going. All the games, by the way, start tonight at 635. The Washington Huskies bid for a national championship in softball fell short last night as Florida State knocked them off by a final of 8-3. to three. The UW got off to a great start, plating three runs in the first inning, but the Dogs could get no more offense going against FSU's pitcher Megan King, pitching for the fourth consecutive day. King allowed just one earned run on five hits and struck out four. The Seminoles belted three home runs in the game to win the school's first ever Women's College Softball World Series title. It was also the first time for an ACC program to win the championship. Kyle Seeger's three-run homer highlighted a four-run first inning as the Mariners went on to beat Houston last night on the road 7-1. Mike Zanino hit a two-run blast to left in the second to back up James Paxton on the mound. That uh, tape measure blast for Zanino, by the way, hit the windows inside of uh, Houston's ballpark. Big Maple went seven and two-thirds, allowed one run on nine hits. He struck out six. Manager Scott Service said it was great to put some early runs on the board, especially against the likes of Dallas Keuchel. Our guys are established starters like Dallas is. You know, jump on them early, and then our guys are ready to go tonight. We were prepared, and you know, the off day uh, helped us a little bit uh, getting down here early, and getting settled in. So, uh, off to a good start uh, on this road trip. Uh, again, you know, name of the game is pitching for us lately, and then Paxton was awesome tonight, which is great to see. Uh, you know, he got the secondary stuff. I think Houston had a game plan against them, but uh, you know, Pax really executed. Uh, got his two seamer going tonight. We hadn't seen that. Uh, in a while. It had been a lot of four-seam fastballs and riding the ball up, and they were staying off it. Went to the two-seamer and had a lot of success with it. The uh, win gives the Mariners a two-game lead in the American League West. The two teams play again today with Wade LeBlanc facing Lance McCullers Jr. Also in the American League West last night, Texas beat Oakland 7-4. The Angels shut out Kansas City 1-0. Seattle's record is now 38-22. Two games in front of Houston, five in front of Los Angeles in the division. There you see Seattle's record at 38-22, Houston at 37-25. The Halos five games back, Oakland seven and a half back, and Texas on the bottom looking up 13 and a half games out of first place. That's Sports Hub, Eric Granstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Eric. With a coverage area spanning nearly 50% of Washington State, a local communications center serves a vital role in keeping our area safe during the fire seasons. In tonight's feature story, NCW Life visited the center to learn more about its operations and the demands of the job. Tucked in a modest building near Pangborn Airport in East Wenatchee, the Central Washington Interagency Communications Center serves as the dispatch hub for five cooperating agencies, covering nearly 22 million acres from the Canadian border all the way down to Oregon. Also known as SWIC, the center serves as the focal point in providing logistical support and resources for anticipated and ongoing fire incidents in Central Washington. Uh, Central Washington Dispatch is one of the largest if not the largest dispatch center in the Pacific Northwest, Oregon and Washington. So as we receive a phone call in, a uh, report of a fire, at that point it goes to the initial attack desk. Um, those folks act on it. Uh, we send resources out to the incident. Um, as the incident expands, we uh, start incorporating the aircraft. Uh, aircraft is another section within the initial attack office. And those, the consoles on this side of the room uh, dispatch those aircraft 
to the incidents. And we have several aircraft at our disposal from fire bosses out of Dow's uh, to large air tankers out of Moses Lake. Uh, we have helicopters here in Wenatchee, helicopters in Ellensburg, and they can be placed anywhere at any time. So we do have a large fleet of aircraft. Uh, and again, that's processed through the aircraft. As the engine ex expands and they start needing resources from outside the area, outside the general vicinity of the fire, then the logistics section would take over at that point. Um, and they would start creating what we call a resource order and sending that to those units in importing those resources into our fires. And we can still have those folks here within a few hours. So what we're looking at here is some of the technology that we use uh, within the dispatch center. This is uh, the geospatial portal. Um, with this, we can view any lightning strikes that's happened within the last week or so. Uh, we can view recent incidents that have happened in the last few days or extended incidents that have, are ongoing. Um, also within this, we can look at heat signatures from satellites. Um, to help us detect fires that are out in the landscape. And we have ability to look at rain shadows, rain forecasts, uh, radar. Uh, we can look at current and predicted weather um, as far as temperatures, uh, humidities, and some of those things on this with this technology. Despite the transition from staffing remote lookout towers using intricate mapping and tracking software at SWIC, Operations Coordinator Jim Duck says staff still combs through hundreds of fire reports. Uh, one year we had a big lightning bus come through and we took 600 fire reports in about a 48 hour period. Now those aren't all separate fires, but when folks see them, they see them from different directions and they may tell us a little different location and so sorting out all of those and find out which ones are actually fires and which ones are not it was quite a chore. We work closely with all the 9-1 centers uh, locally here in Rivercom in Chelan County. We also do Kitcom in Kittitas County, Suncom in Yakima, uh, Kittitas Sheriff's Office, uh, yeah, MAC. Uh, we, we probably touch base with as many as 10 or 12 different 9-1-1 centers at any given time. Our fire season's busy, I would say, probably from the 1st of July. It's getting longer. Uh, we're busy right now a little bit, um, but some seasons will run into the end of October. Uh, we come in in the morning, and we don't know what time we're going home at night. Uh, 12, 14-hour days, uh, we try to keep it to somewhere in that vicinity. It, it does seem to be uh, they're starting earlier and lasting longer before we get the weather in the fall that kind of puts us out of business for a little while. Staffed year-round, the Interagency Dispatch Center helps agencies respond faster and with adequate resources to help minimize catastrophic wildfire throughout the state. Steve Hare, NCW Life News. And we'll be back with your complete local weather forecast right after this. Lake Chelan Mailboxes is a small place with a lot to offer. Job one is shipping and receiving from A to Z. They pack it, they label it, they ship it. But did you know we also offer notary service, online computer access, legal forms, copies, greeting cards, and of course, mailboxes. Chelan Mailboxes, everything you need in one small package. Walk and Roll Wenatchee's Asian Express is fast, fresh food. Wenatchee Roll's new Pokey Hawaiian Fresh Salad Bar is the best. Fresh greens, fresh seafood, and handmade sauces. You know what you want. At Walk and Roll, create your own style meal. Hot off the line chicken, beef, and veggie plates. Lunch or dinner to match your appetite. Fresh sushi, hot entrees, Pokey Fresh Salad Bar. It's new. It's Walk and Roll Wenatchee fast, fresh food your way. Located on 5th and Mission. Join the NCW Life Channel for live coverage of Eastmont and Wenatchee High School commencement ceremonies Friday, June 8th. Coverage brought to you by the Wenatchee Racket and Athletic Club. Sign up for summer programs today. Vominos junk haulers and moving services, big or small, they haul it all. And by Cashmere Valley Bank, the little bank with the big circle of friends. Live Friday, June 8th, Eastmont High's graduation at 6, followed by Wenatchee High's graduation at 8, exclusively on the NCW Live Channel. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. U.S. apple growers are targeted with tariffs as Mexico retaliates against Trump administration's foreign trade dispute. 
Mexico announced Tuesday it will levy tariffs on imports of U.S. products. The order stipulates charges of 15 percent to 25 percent on U.S. farm goods including pork, cheese, potatoes, bourbon whiskey, cranberries and apples. The move follows a U.S. decision to impose tariffs on imports of Mexican steel and aluminum purchases, which took effect on Friday. Washington exports apples valued at $200 million to $250 million a year to Mexico. That represents 10 percent of its total market. Washington Apple Pre uh, Commission President Todd Fryhover talked to NCW Life News earlier this year about the prospects of a possible trade war and how it could upset the apple cart. The Washington apple industry, as maybe some of your viewers don't realize, is heavily dependent upon trade. A third of our product goes to over 60 countries around the world. Um, and this year we expect to ship over 40 million bushels to those 60 markets. So we're very heavily dependent upon trade. And it really is the backbone to keeping growers successful financially to have those outlets in those foreign markets. Time now for a check of your north central Washington weather forecast. Before we get to those details, let's take another look outside our weather window. And it was a nice one out there today as we look down from our SkyFi tower camera from the cross cam. That's up on the hill in East Wenatchee. And you can see down at the beautiful Columbia River and some haze out there. And I mentioned at the top of the newscast that haze is being transported all the way from wildfires happening now in Siberia. Uh, just to the uh, west of Alaska, up north, and I'll show you why in a second as we get to our surface loop. What we're seeing right now, beautiful warm air moving up from the southwest, but up in the northwest in the Gulf of Alaska, that's that huge area of low pressure we've talked about virtually all week. So it's dragging that smoke down from Siberia and transporting it counterclockwise through the Pacific and then up into the Pacific Northwest. That's why we're seeing that haze. A few clouds right now too, but things will definitely begin to change as we move through Thursday at 5, now into Friday at 5 p.m. That area of low pressure, you can see it circulating counterclockwise to the uh, top left of your screen. We'll bring showers by 5 o'clock on Friday. I really believe right now we'll be okay for the outdoor graduation at Wenatchee at 8 because look what happens at 10. We could see some rain beginning to fall here in the Wenatchee area. Just light sprinkles to start with. I think a real big rain, and there you see it will be early Saturday morning around 3 a.m., maybe up to a quarter of an inch of rain here in the Wenatchee area on Saturday. We'll continue with some scattered showers Saturday. Cooler weather behind that frontal system on Sunday, and then nice weather once again for our early next week. Let's take a look now at your quick lube and tune forecast tonight. 59 degrees tomorrow, mostly sunny and warmer. In fact, the warmest day of our forecast at 84. A 70% chance for rain by Friday night. 78 will be the daytime high. 69 for both Saturday and Sunday. A 30% chance for off and on showers on Saturday. And then back to the nice weather on Monday and Tuesday. Mostly sunny both days with highs in the mid to upper 70s. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. Also, keep it right here on the NCW Life channel tomorrow morning for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with your host Dan Kuntz and news with Steve Hare. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. This is TV. This is TV Set Free. TV Everywhere from Localtel sets you free to watch what you want, where you want. Catch your favorite networks, including live TV, ready to watch on any web-connected device for no extra charge. That's TV set free. Enjoy the extra value Localtel delivers with TV Everywhere. Visit Localtel.net and sign up today. What's your auto mocha emergency? It's a Frappita Mocha with Whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate for pita. Definitely the espresso shakes. 
My favorite is the mocha for pitas. Peach Red Bull. 